I mean, no, I'm probably not going to marry a black man, but I mean, I can still talk. Oh, wait, wait. you said probably. So there's hope. (laughs) (laughs) You haven't divested. I have divested. Okay, so why didn't you say I won't marry a black man? You said I probably won't. You, You have to make yourself into the kind of man that women want. You sound like Kevin Samuels. How? You're literally saying what he says. You have to make yourself the type of woman that these type of men want. No, no. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Because according to him, you shouldn't go to college. Because those those men don't value that. Okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Sit in the hood and be poor as hell? But that's not that's not the point. The point is that you, is the point. The, the that rhetoric is, is the same. You're that's saying not, that you're, is not the same thing because okay. that is not the same. No, no, no. The things are different. I agree with you. The things are different, but the rhetoric is the same. Is you're not, saying it's not the same thing. Okay, so if I was to say to you, you have to become the type of man that the type of woman you want because would like. That is what wait, 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 wait. If I have to become the type of man that the type of woman I want wants, correct? You have to become the type of man that women want. Yes. Perfect. And if I said to you, you have to become the type of woman that the type of man you want wants. Is that correct as well? Wrong. Because men and women are not the same. The reality, the reality for a lot of black women is that they are the breadwinners of their families. They are the, they are the higher earners. They are the ones who are most responsible. They are the providers and the protectors of that household. You know what I would tell them? Who have to keep the keep the lights on you know what i would tell those women i I would tell those women to go back to the drawing board and become the type of woman that the type of man that wouldn't require you to be the breadwinner that doesn't attracted to that's not realistic that is not a realistic why not because The, the point i was making is that a lot of our women don't hold white men or white love interests to the same pseudo masculine standards so the white dude doesn't have to make six figures. We the black I don't dude does. Black women ask for black men to make six figures. No, but you, but that. Uh, sure, it might it might not be six figures, but it's other metrics. You guys, you guys impose. And again, if it was just me saying this at my age and other men saying this at their age, I've had conversations with boys in high school, and they say the same thing. They're not making money, but they're talking about like you know, uh, masculine features and things like that. So my thing is, why aren't you, why are you grading white dudes on a curve and still talking shit about black men? Black men don't, I mean. So for those men who are committed, who are doing the right things based on male uh, curriculums or whatever the case may be, and we're still eating shit, what can you say to us? I do, I'm saying that I don't see that as being a real problem because there are not enough black men. What's the definition of gaslighting? Making somebody believe that their reality is not real. What did you just do? You're not, your reality, You. I mean, you. your reality is- You're stuttering because that's what you just did. No. <laughs> How can we honestly have this conversation and claim that black men are enjoying all the perks of masculinity and madness in this particular country without pointing out some of the pitfalls of manness and specifically black madness that black men have to suffer? Because it's like when it's time to give out empathy, we should take it evenly. When it's time to give out blame, we should take all the blame. Black men should take all the blame. And it's like, that doesn't make sense. I don't. Similarly, I could say black women have never had the disposition of femininity, even when black men did lead. No, you but I'm never, not saying that. Because you never led, because you never led, though. Black men never led. No. Ever. No. So Marcus Garvey means nothing to you. Elijah Muhammad means nothing we, to we, you. Oh, Martin we Luther all, King. We can't all marry Marcus Frederick Garvey. Douglass. No, no, no. I'm not talking about those men in particular. I'm talking about the movements, the Black Panthers, the Nation of Islam. We we can't. So you're saying to me there's never been a collective of Black men who led, I'm in spite of 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 
circumstances created to exterminate them you're saying that i'm saying that there is never i'm saying that black men so you're okay. saying black men made a concerted decision to abandon I don't know if a decision was concerted. I know okay, that- Okay, but, but you said they abandoned their post. Yes. Okay, perfect. Before that, you said they never had a post. So which one is it? <laughs> you, you talked yourself into that trap. You said we weren't leaders, then you said we you're, abandoned you're, leadership. You're really like mincing words here, and you're like really like- <laughs> Really nah, because like we, we got to stand beside and behind what we say. Okay, so I'm giving you an opportunity to recant your first statement when you said black men were never leaders. Black, black, black men were never leaders. But you just said they abandoned the home. Yes, but it doesn't mean they were leading in the home. Okay, so what did they abandon? They, they abandoned their kids. They abandoned their wives. Okay, and what, what is their role in their kids' and lives, uh, wives' lives? Um, to be a husband and father. What is husband and father? What is that role? I don't know. It's it's what it's what men are supposed to do. If you're going to get married it's and a, have kids, it's, it's, it's what a, men are supposed to do. It's a leadership role, correct? But but it doesn't mean you're a leader in that role. Again, Kevin Samuel was married. He wasn't a leader is, in his in his marriage. Is husband and father a leadership role? No, <laughs> not not intrinsically. No. Okay, so what what are you complaining that black men did? Because if you were saying black men abandoned their leadership responsibility, we can go there. But what are you, if we weren't leaders, we were never leaders, then what is your gripe with us? What are we doing wrong? Black men complain that the black community is, is, is woman led. You complain that it's a gynocracy. You complain that feminism has taken over, but you don't, but you don't lead anyway. And you according, according to you, we've never led. I mean, I don't know why you're so caught up on if you never or ever led or was there a point in time in history where you at one time did. What does that matter in 2022? Because history is cyclical and words mean things. And if you use very dangerous rhetoric and let's say, for instance, you you have a son, you have a daughter and you're teaching them history is that black men never led. That sets a very dangerous paradigm. And I think that's where it comes from when people say the diverse community sounds like white supremacy. Because you say a bunch of lies to paint a narrative that isn't substantiated by any fact. It's not. It's not a lie. And even if, again, even okay, if so prove it. What What does that one it's, time in history do for us today? How does that help us today? Well, it's it's more than one time, um, obviously. For people who know history, it's more than one. I've given you a bunch of examples, but um, what it does is it changes the paradigm, because. One of the things that we often do as a community is we, we, we talk about ourselves as being incapable of doing better without recognizing the fact that we were kidnapped, without recognizing the fact that we were put in situations to perpetuate our own dysfunction for the benefit of the white so uh, society that we now run to to be our saviors. I think it's very dangerous if we become dismissive of one another's experiences. So similarly, I could say black women in mass are not deserving of good men because they're not feminine. I don't say that. I say that these are the things black women need to do in mass. And for the ones who are doing the right things, if they are getting bad experiences, that's unacceptable, black men. Like you shouldn't, like you could treat the 90 other ones like that, but don't treat her like that. Like she's on her job, she's doing the right thing. Similarly, at the very least, what you could say is, if a black man is doing his job, he's deserving of a good black woman. But you're unwilling to say that. So man, let me let me tell you the ironic thing, man. The chick you just had on, mm -hmm. and me and her from the same. I didn't I didn't know her, but we from the same neighborhood. She's from Philly. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, we grew up in the same hood, man, and I could understand like her mentality because like how we grew up wasn't the greatest. Break that down. Um, just poverty, drugs, you know, single, single mothers rampant, you know what I mean? Abuse, um, just all kind of stuff, man. So like, I can understand why she feels the way she do about black men, because like right. I said, in my hood, you didn't see a lot of black men there and the ones that were there, 
they weren't shit. I mean, excuse me, like, I mean, they, they weren't they weren't the greatest. Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? So that goes back to your point of when you're young, that shapes your perception mm. as an adult. You know what I mean? And, and I think that she doesn't recognize that. Mm. You feel me? Like she doesn't she doesn't recognize. Okay, well, when I was young, seeing all this shaped my perception. So it's just, it's just built up childhood trauma, and like her 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 baseline expectation of black men is what she saw as a kid. Right, correct. And that, that's heavy. That's it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, and that's why I encourage therapy. I encourage conversation because a lot of us, and black men too, a lot of our expectations are based on how our mom was or the, the girls from the block. You know what I mean? So it's important that we we grow and we see the world differently. So. No, man, that's I mean, that, that's real, man. I mean, I mean, we went to some of the same schools, you know. Damn. I mean, like we went, we went to the same middle school. I don't know if we went to the same high school or not. Mm. You know what I mean? And like I said, I I, I get her, you know. Yeah. And it's just it's just unfortunate that that environment made her into who she is. Like you know, I'm you know, I don't I don't know where I rank at as far as earnings. Yes, I'm above average, but. So therefore, I mean, just even in that part of the, if I was the, because that's what I was doing, incorporating myself into that part of the conversation. And she was talking to me specifically saying that I was nothing. Right. I go, what? I make, I'm not like, and that's, and I can't because there's, I have so many other pitfalls that I'm overcoming though, right? At 42, but earning wise, I'm a, I'm way above. Right, right. What are you talking about? And that's all. That's all. Black men are asking. We're just asking. Let 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 us be acknowledged for the things that we're doing right, as opposed to the narrative that that's constant and consistent about how it doesn't matter what you do, you will never be good enough. And we all grew up hearing that, and it's unacceptable. 